Hello, everyone, and welcome to another spoiler review here on the Geek Buddies. <gasps> hey! Well, and we're back again here. I like, uh, by the way, I like yeah. Emma's look of just like shock, concern, and, <laughs> and, and what and what the fuck is really going on here. That's yeah. my favorite part of it when we do these. But I mean, the thing is, isn't that correct for WandaVision? Yes. Is shock, concern, and what the fuck is really going on here? I mean, and don't pretty on the nose. And don't mention Ultron, or he can't stay <laughs> for much longer. Uh, we're getting into yeah, this is what, what uh, Emma just mentioned here. That is, if you look at the title of this video, I hope you did. This is what we're talking about. WandaVision uh, Season 1, Episode 3, our spoiler review. Spoiler review. So many of you enjoyed our uh, spoiler review for Episodes 1 and 2. It's at over 11,000 views already. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, we are back again. We'll be back through the rest of the season to review it episode by episode. And uh, let's introduce ourselves. I am the outlaw, John Roca, joined by these two gentlemen and this lovely guest here, uh, Mikey. I am Mikey or Michael or Mike, <laughs> whatever. Just call me Vogel. Uh, writer and producer of animated shows and content and excited Marvel sitcom television person. There you go, Shane. And this is Shannon O'Klong. I'm an animation writer and a television actor where I've actually been on some multicam sitcoms <laughs> like Anger Management, The Wizards of Waverly Place, which is John's favorite to bring up every year on my yes. birthday. <laughs> I love it. And Modern Family, which is not a multicam. I've only done two multicams. So there you go. There you go. As a football referee. And of course, we're joined uh, uh, for these reviews by our very special guest, the great Emma Five. How are you, Emma? I'm just great. I am a recovering tour guide. So like I am very familiar with uh, some of the locations that we saw in the opening montage mm. for this very 70s episode of WandaVision. It is really, really fun for me, I will say, because I because again, as I mentioned on the last episode, they filmed a little bit on the Universal backlot. Right. So like seeing the stuff that is very obvious in Courthouse Square, I just like the whole opening sequence in this one, because it, it wasn't in the actual episode, but it was in the opening sequence that I just like was losing my mind the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's get into it. You know, this episode uh, uh, very much, last last warning, spoiler review, spoiler review before we jump into it here. Uh, but yeah, this episode very much in the style of the old school Brady Bunch, uh, which most of us grew up on and Emma discovered on Nick at Night. Uh, and so <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of things to explore here from the beginning, from the opening. The basic plot of this uh, uh, show, uh, this episode uh, deals with the birth of the twins, uh, who those of you who are uh, immersed in Marvel comic lore will know who the twins are, what they represent, but we'll get into it as they come up throughout uh, this episode and this review. But yeah, birth of the twins and what that spurs and a little more of the mystery behind Gerald Dean. And by the way, I should say this. We didn't touch on this last week and someone brought it up. This is really cool. I forgot Gerald Dean could be a reference to Flip Wilson's character. For those of you who remember the 70s, mm -hmm. Flip Wilson played a, she, he used to dress up as a woman and play an alternative alternative character named Gerald Dean on his shows. And maybe that's a reference to that. Flip Wilson, very strong uh, representative of entertainment in the black community. So maybe that's an homage or a reference to him there. So I thought that was cool to discover. And I want to throw that in. But anyway, we get the beginning here, the intro, very much reminiscent, as, as Emma mentioned, of the Brady Bunch in the 70s and all that. We get the hexagon uh, shapes. We get Vision in his uh, green and yellow shirt. We get Vision trying to, to construct a green and yellow playset. We get Wanda. They're having ice cream. They're going all this, all this stuff is going on here. Uh, Emma, let's start with you since you brought it up. What, what was yes. your reaction to this whole opening uh, aside from and including uh, the fact that you could pick out where they were shooting? This <laughs> yeah, the when I was like, oh, that's New York Street. That's uh, Brownstone <laughs> Street. That's Courthouse Square. It was just all the Metro sets. Uh, they never looked better. Um, no, uh, I mean... It was very, it was, it was like a mishmash of Brady Bunch and Partridge family. Uh, just the, the montage of like the hijinks of the neighbors. Yes. And again, like doing the grid Brady Bunch style, but very intentionally like making it that hexagon shape, which we were yeah. talking about how that keeps repeating. And so obviously like that could be a reference to uh, Infinity Stone specifically to the Mind Stone or also like hex magic. Because that's like yeah. a wand of the a Scarlet sure. Witch sort of power as well. So I mean, but again, like the attention to detail that they have in terms of creating these these very intentional, like 
again, homages to mm. the shows from bygone eras mm. is yeah. really incredible. I uh, like who is the art department on this? I'm so <laughs> jealous of all the furniture and just set decor that they get to work with. Yeah, certainly. Michael, what was your reaction to this? And that opening song, Michael, had some lyrics. You being a lyricist, you've written some My Little Pony songs. Those, these lyrics were on point. You know, one plus one is more than two. Gold yep. great expectations lead to complications. Like, what was your reaction to this opening intro? I think in general, my reaction to every opening info, in, intro has been giddy, giggling like a five-year-old. I think, I think like, like it's so, I, I, I've been seeing a lot, and we'll touch on this a little bit more, like I've seen a lot, it seems like the fans are kind of split. Some mm. people are along for this ride, some people are like, okay, I get it, but like, give me the goods, like I want to know where this is going. I am definitely in the former camp, like, I, I am equally as excited about the unraveling MCU mystery as I am about the detail of sitcom ridiculousness that they're getting into. Right. And as someone who loves TV theme songs, as someone who likes opening title credits, like each one of these has been such a delight. And we are now getting, not quite, like I, I saw a lot of this on Nick at Night too, but we are now getting to like my era of television. Yeah. yeah and it's yeah. really exciting and fun to watch. Uh, also, you know, you, you like you were mentioning Vision uh, with, the, with the yellow and green uh, kind of making the swing set. That's basically the Brady Bunch swing set. I mean, you yep. know, even though even though this isn't like a straight down the line Brady Bunch because they don't have a family yet there's no like this very all the little sort of nods to Brady Bunch like the stairs like the swing set and yes. opening credits very very cute um I will say I did read this somewhere but I have to agree with it I am also recognizing that when you're watching the look and fashion of these different decades like juxtaposed right up against each other each week boy we just all look really really cute in the 50s and 60s in the 70s <laughs> <laughs> not, you know, not as much like the hair like it's like it's like you know like 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 i know there's people who love their 70s fashion but just like looking at hairstyles looking at like little outfits and stuff i'm kind of like mm, i feel yeah. like we swerved i feel like we swerved in the 70s but that's neither here nor there no i liked geraldine's like foxy brown look in this episode Absolutely. i did like geraldine's yeah. i will also say i will get to this later too but one of my yeah. other favorite things about this uh just as, while we're on fashion is that Everyone is so obsessed with every Easter egg and reference and what does this really mean that I had somebody like text me last night and they were like, hey, really important question. I know you're doing your review. What did the fish on Geraldine's <laughs> pants mean? And I was like, ooh, ooh, ooh. So really, really deep, really deep cut here. Yeah. Storks are birds yeah. and they like to eat fish. <laughs> they do. They do. <laughs> <laughs> Just for a bit with the stork. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Shannon, uh, what was your reaction uh, to this opening here overall? And also what Michael's referencing, the fashion styles uh, that uh, President Nixon would probably say, these damn hippies. Uh, what would you feeling about this as you're looking at this? I mean, maybe it's because growing up with parents who were the furthest thing from hippies that they could be. Everyone <laughs> from the 70s looks like they just smelled bad. I mean, and it, and it oh goes God. all the way from people That's on the so street funny. to the highest levels of politics. I'm like, Everyone here looks like they stink. What? Everyone, everyone from the 70s, it's because they didn't cut their hair. They've got these long uh, mustaches. Everyone just looks like they smell bad. That, but that's me. Everyone wow. in the 50s, 60s, not so much. The 70s, everybody stinks. Um, but in terms of the lyrics, though, I mean, it, you know, a lot of those opening opening credit sequences from, from television shows in the 70s that had those kind of catchy theme songs, you know, it's a lot of like, kind of nonsense but when you right. look at what michael had pointed out last week like saying one thing and meaning another like mm. this all great expectations lead to complications but it's yeah. grooving fun it's me and it's you together one plus one some sudden surprises come in all shapes and sizes which lets us know that like more stuff is coming down more stuff is coming down the pike right, right. now mm -hmm. right absolutely well let's go over this opening scene here you know it's perfect the way they go right to the outside shot of the house before they go in the doctor is there doctor stan Nielsen, which a lot of people are breaking down, going Stanley and the Nielsen ratings. Yes. Very funny. Super misogynistic doctor. As if you go back. Oh and my God. <laughs> as you go back and watch these 70s sitcoms, there's a little bit of misogyny. That there. <laughs> actually is a theme throughout the episode of things that we thought were like wacky and hijinks when yeah. we were watching 70s sitcoms. We now look at through a modern lens and go, yeah. oh no, this is not okay. <laughs> we put it, we put it in terms 
forms of fruit because it's easier for them to understand. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta love Wanda's like, okay, all right. I'm not, yeah. I'm not gonna decimate you in this well, moment. Because that's because that is the thing that that I think is particularly clever and, and fun about this series is yeah. that even though Wanda and Vision are fully playing into whatever the sort of motif is for that particular episode in that time period that they're supposed to be in as far as television goes, yeah. you as the audience are aware that they are modern characters and yeah, right. they underneath the montage are aware that they are modern characters. So, But they're, they're like basically playing into these eras, but with modern sensibilities. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and Michael, this section here we have uh, that she is pregnant, which is, of course, happening quickly. That was a surprise at the end of the last episode. The doctor is monitoring the heartbeats. They may have a little quip, but Vision the whole time, Paul Bettany Vision is questioning how this is happening so fast. Even says, what would the fruit be like at 12 hours? Uh, then, of course, she uh, wanted to kind of defer, you know, kind of uh, goes, oh, it's fruitless. Let's move on. And he escorts the doctor out. So what do we have going on here? Because what really struck me through this episode, Mike, is Vision is starting to break through and create more cracks in what Wanda has built here. Yeah. Uh, and it's certainly here evident throughout this whole episode as he's questioning her more and more. Absolutely. I mean, one of the things I thought was neat, just get it right off the bat, was between episode one and episode two, uh, they're very self-contained as sitcoms. So it's right. it's a little bit hard to say, oh, well, is this is this happening right after? Like we don't we didn't see the transition. Right. Because we saw the transition at the end of episode two and we saw Wanda uh with child or mm -hmm. children. Right. Um and they make it really clear here that it's been like 12, like this is a continuation. Like we are just right. a few hours after what we saw in episode two. It's and the next morning possibly. Yeah. Right? yeah. Well, I mean, it literally is the next morning, like yeah. given, given the time frame. And yes, <laughs> as much as we play, and as we've said, like just watching the cute factor of Vision and Wanda in these episodes. And as much as it's fun to watch, want, to watch Vision kind of play the... Uh, nervous father, what's going on? I'm a little bit, conf I'm a little bit confused and whatever. Uh, it works on the level of the sitcom, as we've said, but you are 100% right. This is also an episode that is all about Vision being like, what's going on? Yeah. And this is where he's really like it, it. And I think this kind of extends to a lot of characters. It's like everyone is starting to be like, hold on. This is not making sense. Yeah. And yeah. this is the bare, this is the very beginnings of that. Yeah, I mean, Shannon, he walks out after, you know, he, after he walks the doctor out, the doctor says, I'm going to Bermuda, like they always do in the sitcoms. They're always yeah. on their way what, out the door. What is it with Bermuda? Like, Bermuda <laughs> is this recurring, yeah. Yeah. like, location, but it's not even a location. It's just a trope. It's just a trope of, like, I'm going yeah. to Bermuda, but nobody actually, we never see Bermuda. No, yeah. we never <laughs> see Bermuda in any of the sitcoms, that's for sure. Uh, we went to Hawaii, but with the yes. Bermuda, but that's yeah. as far as we went, that's for sure. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, Shannon, he walks out. We're allowed to actually go on vacation. It's like, <laughs> yeah. it's Hawaii. Uh, he walks out, and he sees, after he, you know, after the doctor heads on off, and, you know, he tells him to be mom about the pregnancy, he sees Herb, and Herb is cutting he has stopped head cutting his hedges and starts cutting into the concrete wall essentially the symbolism of this division between the reality and the fakeness uh and he's cutting through it and he seems to almost be doing it with a smile on his face like he's like ha, ha, ha. like what was your reaction as you're watching this well it was it was one of two things one it's just like okay we've seen how like the branches were sort of like the helicopter crashing these these tools cutting into that wall it was yeah. like are, are somebody trying to get in right now but also there's oh, the yeah. fact that you know you have the imperfections of this world which more and more people are starting to notice and is it just sort of like uh like a non-playable character from a video game where they you you spy you spy a character in the background doing something nonsensical and it's just bugs in the system yep mike mm -hmm. i well i also think and i mean i and i do not have an answer here which i'm kind of enjoying but like the question of how much these characters or these uh, townspeople actually know, because yes. there's moments like this one with Herb, where you are, it is totally like that NPC kind of like, oh, I was just doing what I was supposed to do. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. And it's very yeah. like uh, Stepford Wives, kind of like I'm, yes. I'm, I'm stuck in this thing. But later, and we'll get to it in more detail, but later when he's talking to Agnes, it's mm. like, well, no, you clearly know. Similar with Dr. Nielsen, so similar, and, and with Geraldine in episode two and especially in episode three. Yeah. And it, it's starting to seem, this is just a theory and it, it could be completely wrong, but it's almost like when Wanda's around, 
her desire or the desire of whoever's pulling these strings yeah. keeps people uh, sort of in the fog, if you will. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and when Wanda's focused on this or when the focus is a little bit elsewhere, they're coming out of it and they're like, we are, this is fucking crazy. Yeah. Might not apply to Agnes. Like it, it, that, is, that is a working theory that I'm dealing with and it mm -hmm. doesn't even come close to covering the Dotties and everything else. Like it's very hard to quite figure out what's going on, but this is the fun of it. And this Herb mm -hmm. moment, uh, and much more so than this episode, you know, episode one, we sort of had the the hearts at dinner moment, which got yeah. super weird. And that was it. And episode two with, as Shannon was saying, the helicopter, mm -hmm. uh, Dottie cutting her hand, Wanda, who's doing this to you. We definitely got more of the weird moments. And episode yeah. three just doubled down and they were like, OK, it is fucking strange in this place. Yeah. yeah. And we're yeah. seeing we're seeing the cracks, Emma, more and more like she's losing control of the situation more and more. Well, exactly right. Because, I mean, what, what's happening in, in this episode, and I think that, you know, Mikey bring up a good point, is that we start to see this weird scenario of him trying to saw through a, a stone wall instead of a, a hedge, because there's no more hedge to trim, I guess. Yeah. But it is, but, but what it boils down to is that, like, we're seeing her in this episode as she is, you know, rapidly getting more and more pregnant. Uh, yeah. She's she's losing control of her powers. Like she yeah. makes it rain in the house. Um, she you know cuts off all the electricity in the neighborhood. So I think that that is all related and thus plays into the theory that we discussed last week, which mm. is that she is she's the architect of yeah. this world and yeah. and like the warden as well. Yeah, yeah, which is scary to think about <laughs> for sure because there are moments in this episode where she goes back to that Wanda that was oh, about yeah. to rip Thanos into pieces uh, in that, that tone of voice that Elizabeth Olsen uses so well when she needs to go into that place. Um, also, he, so, so he, you know, he, he stares at her for a little bit. Vision walks in. Wanda is bigger. He's blown away by that, runs over, and this is the first reference we see to Vision's speed. This is going to be important as we talk about the kids. Vision's speed is also a focus here in this episode, Mike. We did see it in episode one. Uh, in episode one, when he was at computational, where like whatever his oh, computer right. business yeah, was, yeah, yeah. he was doing it really. That was the first time we saw it. But I think it is right. like for any for anyone as, who's keeping track, like Vision up to this point in the MCU, super speed is not. Yeah, uh, one of the things that we associate with him, it's associated with another major character that we bring up in this episode. Um, and so I think there's a lot to talk about there, but you are a thousand percent right. Even though we did see it in episode one, they go out of their way in this episode yeah. to use it multiple times and be like, hey, Vision has super speed. Vision has super speed. Right. And he makes a, a bad dad joke about being a papaya. Uh, oh and God. then they that was a straight up Shannon. So that was a Shannon McClung level joke. I thought it was solid, and I don't know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> sure Shannon was like, that's a good one. Uh, <laughs> Nolan! <laughs> uh, so we walk in, and then she's uh, she, we cut to her, uh, you know, the, uh, sitting in the baby's room. She said, And once again, the way they do the effects, very, very 70s effect, because that's where it's set. You know, she builds out the crib. Everything comes together. The butterfly uh, mobile that she pulls out, and uh, Vision is there reading uh, again about what uh, to expect reads out some of the stuff she's going to experience and says, hey, why don't you sit down? Um, uh, but she says she feels excited and that is her mindset, right? No, this is going to be great. This is so cool. It's Vision who's the one who's worried. It's Vision who's the one who's concerned about everything and making, trying to make sure she's okay. And then she has a contraction or, a, or, a, or, some, or the kicking Dragon happens. Hicks, yeah. And then the butterflies come out of the mobile and land on his face and then go out the window. So yeah, even when she's not trying, and she even says, uh, Emma, she's like, oh, did I do that? I didn't know I did that. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting to see these little moments where uh, she is losing control of her powers. Well, it's her just, I think, buying in more and more to her own fantasy. It, it mm -hmm. feels like a, a like grasping at this thin, false reality that she's created. Yeah, yeah. And Michael, we go, we come up with the names here. We have this battle oh, yeah. over Tommy and Billy. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Vision wants Billy. William Shakespeare, of course, says all the world's a stage, which yeah. is a reference to this idea of this is also a fake play that they're all yeah. in as well, yeah. Mike. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So obviously anyone who's a comic book person, we've been talking about it for weeks. Everyone in comic books has been talking about it for weeks. But yes, Tommy and Billy 
are their kids. Yeah. That Wanda and Vision, uh, that Wanda sort of creates in the comics, they are clearly going down that road here. Yes. Um, but yeah, so, the, so fun to like have the Billy and Tommy sort of debate. Very cute. Yes, John, you're totally right. The As You Like It quote, the All the World's a Stage and the Men and Women Merely Players a thousand percent accurate to everything we are watching right now. Right. Right. Uh, and yeah, and then um, and then is this where Vision then starts to get a little uh, questiony about things? Yeah, 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 yeah. He starts to wonder how this is all oh, because she's uh, kicking already, and he's saying, "Well, I, it's, it, I do want to see you." And you know how fast you're coming again. This reference to speed uh, being a part of this episode for uh, as well, and also if you lay that whole quote out of all the worlds a stage, it ends with they with they have their exits and entrances. So this idea of people leaving permanently and people coming in to the scenes or whatever so it's just fascinating how that quote is used here in this moment go ahead yeah mike yeah well so and so then we just get to this moment where you know they're kind of like talking about the fact of like are people going to figure this out like yeah. you know like like what's going on and like as we've talked about i think this might be one of my favorite things about wandavision so far is seeing them uh break out of the illusion yes and how and how their acting changes mm -hmm. and so when vision all of a sudden is like you know that thing with the hearts was weird things with herb is weird like things are not right here and then very like natural acting like what we would have seen in uh the regular mcu movies mm -hmm. just looks at wanda he's like wanda i think something's wrong and then i swear to god i thought my disney plus messed up <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i thought i thought it glitched and i'm like the fuck disney plus my goddamn internet <laughs> um <laughs> But yeah, so like it was what's great is like when we saw in episode two with the beekeeper where Wanda gave the uh, the very uh, emphatic no, and we actually rewound. Mm -hmm. uh, this just doubled down it again. We just fully glitched. Yeah, like we didn't yeah. even like we just went boom, and it was very very effective. Clearly, but, since I got confused. And, and let's and let's put a pin on that because that 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 happens just a few a couple minutes later. We do have the scene where he's doing the diapers. Uh, and that, oh, that's right. Right, right. right. Yeah, my bad, you, my bad. You're right. No, no worries. We, and he's there. It's in the, and there's sitting in the kitchen and he's being timed once again this idea of speed how quickly can he put the diapers on that's there and then braxton hicks is mentioned i looked all over that's a real thing it is a real so, thing yeah. So yeah. I, was, I was like oh is this a marvel thing no it's a real thing there's no dr braxton in the marvels <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I mean, but her, her pain causes uh, you know things to go awry but, and things start to blow up things start to mess up in the kitchen and then they come out of it freaking out and they go into a position to defend oh, yeah. themselves. And this is a reference to this Marvel comic here. This was a little <laughs> bit of a reference to this, the number one of a 12 issue limited series uh, that, that they released with Vision and a Scarlet Witch. So that's what uh, was going on there. So yeah, very interesting to see them kind of make these references and what have you throughout. And yeah. this is also where we cut to the neighbors, where we cut to Dottie, Dottie and, and Phil, oh right? right. right. And anyway, if you look at the newspaper that he's that he's reading on the front, it says it looks like it says two new fire hydrants, yes. but yes. it stops at H Y D R. And right. I don't know if it goes to the A, but the fact that yeah. Hydra is somewhat displayed there, I don't think that's an accident. It says two new Hydra. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. oh, Interesting. Yeah. Also, um, also, sorry. Mm -hmm. also, also, Dottie and Phil for like for like two seconds of screen time really stuck the landing on that joke. <laughs> they really did. <laughs> okay, I yeah. mean, like the like the fact that the fact that even though they're doing these super cheesy sitcom jokes, right. I am a sucker for it. Like, yeah. like, does this make me look fat? Lights go out. Whew. Yeah. Thank it's, goodness. Like, it was, it was so good. And it was specifically, do these earrings make me look fat? Right, right. <laughs> right. And, and there's a meaning there, right? Earrings, two of the same, make you look fat, being pregnant. Mm -hmm. But also, the lamp. If you notice the lamp, it has two children wrapped around each other at its base. So that look alike. So it's that idea. To Emma's, to Emma's point, the art, the, uh, the, art, the art direction team, the set design team, like, they are, they are going over time in this in these oh, episodes. Yeah. yeah, very much. <laughs> I bet they love the uh, they're watching the reviews of people catching this stuff going. <laughs> um, oh yeah. So yeah, Mikey, we get to your point here that you brought up here. Wanda's worried that the people in Westview. By the way, I was thinking about this. Westview 
Wanda Vision WV, two different things. Just a kid occurred to me as I was watching it. But anyway, uh, this uh, we're talking. He's questioning things, and then you get the glitch in the Matrix. Uh, uh, Emma, what was your react to this? Is glitch in the Matrix, and he comes back a more understanding, a more caring Vision as opposed to a questioning Vision. So even here, she's controlling even her own man to react to things in a certain way to but keep the, the lie going. But the thing is, is that Vision is dead. Like, like in the real. Oh, Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're pretty sure vision is dead yeah, yeah. so it's extremely eerie when you think too hard about like how is vision existing in this world like yeah. is it his consciousness is it literally just her own construct like is is it somehow her own like the the part of herself that's aware that she's creating this illusion that's going like hey do you maybe want to check in with reality? You know what I mean? Like right. it, it's a question of like who who exactly is vision in all of this? Yeah. Well, you make a good point, Emma, because they had talked about this week uh, about how there was going to be a post credit sequence that they talked about it with Endgame that was going to relate to WandaVision. Like they didn't really get into mm. specifics, but you know, Vision's robotic corpse. Uh, it was in Wakanda, and yeah. more than likely, the Avengers did not leave it there. Mm -hmm. So the fact that uh, you know Wanda came back, like th there is going to be some some filling in of the gap yeah. that we're going to have to do in between Endgame and whenever WandaVision starts. Yeah. yeah. Well, and there is something kind of beautiful, and again, who knows which way they're going to go, because given that Vision's a robot, there are a lot of options on the table, but there's something kind of beautiful about somebody uh, creating the person that they lost to live in this sort of uh, yeah. idyllic mm -hmm. fantasy world. Sure. But in creating that person, that person, even even your uh, made up version of that person still is that person and is starting to question what's going on. Right. Like there's something right. sort of sad and tragic about that, that like yeah. if that is the way they go, it's gonna be sort of just heartbreaking. I think it's like, gonna have to be vision. Yeah. yeah. Mikey, sorry. It, it's gonna. I think it's gonna have to be Vision that breaks this whole thing, don't you think? Well, just even, even in given, you know, we know this from watching the trailers, but when we get to next week's episode or the week after that, with, with the Halloween episode where Agnes uh, is dressed as a witch and sort of yeah. says to Vision, like, "Oh, you're an Avenger. Are you here to save us?" And also is like, "I was like, are, well, am I dead? And why would you say that? Well, because you're dead. Like, the, like the, what, whatever this Vision is, he is going on a road of self discovery and yes. he's going to start to figure things out." <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can if you construct it. How much is constructed from his actual energy, his actual whatever? Well, so that's the question you have here as you're watching this episode. And also, yeah. and also, even though we know the Infinity Stones themselves were destroyed in Endgame, right? right. Wanda's power is directly from the Mind Stone. So, right. does her creating a new version of Vision does that infuse enough uh, actual? life into him given her power like there's it's gonna be there's it's gonna be really interesting to see how they slice this like how, right. how it all ends up like rolling out well bruce banner in infinity war posited like we could take the mind stone out there's still a lot of vision left like there's yeah. no there's no saying that the that the mind stone is the primary thing that powered vision like yeah. is wanda powerful enough with her mind stone imbued powers to bring him back to life yeah, that's the thing. I mean, she's creating babies. Why can't she bring Vision back to life for God's mm -hmm. sake? Uh, but yeah, we get her contractions coming for real this time. Uh, Vision starts to fly in a panic, which is a great little moment. Then they calm each other down with the breathing exercises. Uh, and then uh, w then her water breaks. The sprinkler <laughs> breaks all over the house. The water breaks. And we go to this ad. Uh, Shannon, I go to you for this ad. Do you need a break? Do you mean a mental break? Do you read my mind? Escape to a world all your own when you don't want to get away, but you don't when you want to get away, but you don't want to go anywhere. Hydra soak, find the goddess within. So all so of this references. So yeah, I mean, I was actually looking at it because at first it was like, okay, she's got two kids. She's got a boy and a girl. That could be that could be uh, Pietro and Wanda. And mm -hmm. at first, I was kind of like, "Oh no, they they got rid of the couple." Like, no, that's the same actress. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> she, totally the same actress. Yep. She she has a wig on, and then yeah. when they cut to her in the tub, the guy with the palm frond, that's the commercial man from the uh, from the previous two episodes. And it's yeah. interesting because what Mike said before about we're 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 kind of chasing things that may not actually be there. I think about the butterfly. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, where have we seen butterflies before? Doctor Strange. Uh, you know, yeah. you see it in his first movie when the Ancient One sends him on his trip, and that's also what he turned uh, Thanos's uh, 
uh, pulse pulse uh, dark hole ball yeah, into right. a bunch of butterflies. Good like, reference. is that a connection to Doctor Strange? We don't know. Right. Looking at the end when they when they show the actual cube, I'm like, oh well, that looks like the Tesseract. Mm -hmm. But Wanda didn't necessarily have anything to do with the Tesseract, so it's like, mm -hmm. are we are we chasing specters that aren't there? But yeah. Yeah, I'm so excited to see more of these commercials and seeing yeah. if these theories that we have pan out. Yeah. Well, and, and and Johnny, to your point, like you know, like I with the first two, I was kind of expecting a well, what's the next stage of Wanda's right. trauma or whatever, and this definitely seemed like a little bit of a different animal. But yeah. yes, you're 100 percent right. Like you read my mind, uh, which is exactly kind of what she does in Age of Ultron, yeah. uh, as far as as far as the first time we see her powers, escape to a world all your own where your problems float away pretty much seems like where she's currently at yeah. uh and when you want to get away but you don't want to go anywhere like you know like like is that like where where is where you know where is she she's in her own mind and then find the goddess within mm -hmm. um this is clearly wanda is stepping into a level of powers that up to this point in the mcu at least yeah. she has not had yeah. um and so stepping into this new role uh, stepping into the role of a goddess, if there is some other bigger villain, some big bad uh, pulling the strings, do they want Wanda by their side? So you know, like there's so many pieces of this, but that's clearly what's yeah. it about. And then the other thing I saw, I had stopped watching S.H.I.E.L.D., but I guess in S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah. there was like a reference to Hydra blue soap that they were using to mind control people. So the Hydra soak, bath soaps might also be a reference to that as well. Yeah. So yes, See, Shannon, I think we are chasing specters, but I think there's also a shit ton there. So I was like, I don't know. Let's just talk about all of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. What, you're, what you're referencing is a season four. Agent Coulson's refer. Agent Coulson refers to Hydra as quote mind control soap in season four. Um, also, one thing to throw in, and this is interesting from the goddess stuff. And Emma, I want to get your thoughts mm -hmm. on this as well. In the Marvel Studios Visual Dictionary, here's the books. The book notes. She may be called Scarlet Witch, but Wanda's powers aren't derived from the occult. Whether it altered her or merely unlocked something late inside Wanda, the Infinity Stone on Loki's scepter bestowed, bestowed incredible powers of the mind. So it's possible the Mind Stone did not grant Wanda's powers, but rather unlocked and, yeah. the goddess within. So yeah, that's another reference, too. What do you think about the ad yeah, and those things? Well, because as we say, you know, th this whole idea of, uh, again, this this commercial was very different than the other two in, yeah. in terms of I think this was more illustrating. It, it was more of like a look at the current reality almost of this idea of, again, like escaping into a world of your own, but also that we are dealing with a Wanda now who is in some ways that she may not even be aware of because right now what she's doing is using that power to kind of shield herself and, yeah. and, and deal with her own trauma, but that she's now at a level of, of powers that we have not experienced yet. Yeah. Yeah, certainly. Uh, and we're going to get a sample of her powers next as we come out of the ad. Everything is soaked. They climb out from under the table and then she uses her powers to basically blow dry the house uh, and, war and, war and get everything back dry. I but was so worried about all the wet stuff in their house. I was like, oh no, <laughs> all that beautiful set design. <laughs> Well, she handles it, dries it all. Her contractions start to get severe. Uh, they realize they have to go get the doctor. He, the phone doesn't work. So he says he's got to leg it. And he gets out there and he runs to go get the doctor while Wanda deals with her contractions. And then Geraldine shows up here in full regalia. Uh, Emma, you spoke about how much you love I Geraldine did. in this episode. Please talk about this scene here with Geraldine coming in. Look at oh, her. I mean, this is your classic cringe comedy sitcom scene. <laughs> uh, and also, I, that's what it is. It's cringe yeah. comedy. Yeah. Um, and also, they made so many references to all the dumb ways they tried to hide actresses being pregnant on yes, TV shows. The, yeah. I was just thinking of Felicia Rashad on the Cosby show. So <laughs> like like every time where you'd be like, why is she always standing behind those grocery bags? Uh -huh, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and like the whole thing where she puts on the coat and she's like, it's like 76 degrees outside, but okay. Um, <laughs> and then when the coat changes when she's in the kitchen and they're looking That's for great. the bucket and her manipulating herself around the counter and then just holding the bowl of fruit, uh, which again, we we go back to the beginning of the episode where the doctor's like, well, we just put it in terms of fruit because it's easier for them to understand. Uh, <laughs> And and it was that very classic for whatever reason, like Geraldine just keeps looking past yeah. this very obvious pregnancy that she has. Um, 
which again was like, it was almost like a reflection of ourselves, of like yeah. Yeah. all of us well, willingly overlooking these things. But yeah. it's also like, to your point, like we've all seen this in so, like where you're watching a sitcom and you're like, oh my God, this is so dumb, this is unrealistic. And <laughs> yeah. they're, they're clearly making fun of that. But at the same time, like, this is the world that Wanda has created that like mm -hmm. when these people and, and and with Geraldine specifically, like when we get to Agatha and Herb and who knows what when, Geraldine is, it is particularly in this episode where she is playing a very sort of, uh, uh, you know, like, hey, I'm the black friend from the 70s. And like yeah. the way she's sassy telling- black neighbor. Sassy like, black neighbor. Like she's, yeah. she's the sassy black neighbor and she's not noticing yeah. what's going on. And so yeah. the two moments where she comes out of that are so clearly specific, it's easy yeah. to tell. So the fact that she's not seeing it is very much an homage to old sitcoms and the ridiculousness of them, but also kind of ties into the, yeah, you're kind of under this spell right now. Yeah, yeah. and Shannon, we get a stork. What's that all about? What? I mean, uh, we're, we're kind of linking it to, again, we're kind of linking it to the, like she brought the butterflies to life and like they've right. got this stork that's, but uh, her yeah, magic- Yeah, they painted on the wall. But yeah. her magic doesn't work on the stork. Yeah, the red pound yeah. What is the red cloud all about? I looked everywhere for a reference on that and no one had anything on that. Well, the red you cloud guys... is just the 70s version of her, of her magic powers, powers? Of, okay. of, that red, of that red lighting effect that they do. But yeah. the thing that really struck me about is like, okay, she's not able to make this thing disappear. Is this thing something she manifested or somebody else manifested? Manifested. Oh, interesting. interesting. I hadn't thought about something, somebody else manifesting it. That's interesting too. Yeah, I just yeah. thought of the stork being like, a, hey, your babies are coming whether you like yeah. it or not. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I got that. Stork. <laughs> I like that. Also, that stork was funny. Yes. The stork yes. was hilarious. That stork's <laughs> that stork's comic timing was <laughs> was on point. Like when she threw that fruit and it was like Rah! and like kind of like got out of there. <laughs> like I was loving it when it came out at first. I'm like, is this this has to be a computer effect? Because there's no way you train a bird to do oh, yeah. everything that it's doing right now. Incredible yeah. effect. Yeah, agree. Amazing, agree. amazing. But also, I will say that one of the things that again is is something that we laughed at all the time in I Dream of Genie or Bewitched is this idea of these things that shouldn't be there, these powers that are manifestations of genie powers, which powers, what have you, and then kind of fooling the nosy neighbor into thinking like, yeah. oh, it's just my ice maker. Um, right. That that was so funny in those old series, but this is again another moment of looking at something through a modern lens and going like, "Oh, this feels like gaslighting." Yeah, well, it, but and particularly because this is the first moment in this episode where Geraldine breaks. Yeah. Had Geraldine not had she not broken? Yes. Had she just had she just been like, "What's that?" And she's like, "I got that." And she's like, "Well, that's great, Wanda," and just kept going with the story. No, it would no. have been very much like the typical thing. But because when Geraldine hears that noise yes. and stands up. Before she even opens her mouth, you see on her face just confusion, yeah. fear, like what what's going on? And she's like, when she asks what that noise is, right. the whole like sassy black neighbor from the seventies is totally gone. Yeah. Yep. And she's very confused. And then Wanda kind of does the oh, that's my ice maker. And then you see her settle back in and be like, huh? Yeah. Anyways, and she you goes right back into it. And that's what makes it so unsettling. Cause you're right. Like when Samantha or Jeannie in Bewitched and I Dream of Jeannie like did that, you're like, you're on their side. You're like, Whoo. Yes, you're rooting All for right. them. And with this one, you're like, I'm starting to feel very uncomfortable about what's yeah. going on here. I'm worried about Geraldine. I'm worried for Geraldine. Yes, exactly. Well, two things here. One, she the is the story is she works for an ad agency. What's ads they they present to you a fake life that you can have. You just purchase their product. The other thing is this, and I thought this was interesting when she said, I got promoted. I'm corporate now. So is this her first mission for sword? Is she being a part of like, this, is, this is what I wonder about. And so I thought the story had a little bit of a meaning here. That yeah, she kind yeah, of, yeah, you know, kind yeah. Of yeah. I was very split down the middle. I went back and listened to her story twice and I could not decide if as Shannon was saying, I was chasing specters Mm. Or if there's really something there. Like, I think that there's so much there, there everywhere that I kind of assume there is. But yeah, we know, even though S.W.O.R.D. Uh, in the Marvel Universe doesn't stand for sentient world uh, observation, it's sentient no. weapon observation, we know from the end of Spider-Man Far From Home that there is a space station yeah. up above the Earth, and Nick Fury's there with a whole bunch of scrolls. Right. And if S.W.O.R.D. here is an extension of that, when to your point, Johnny, the... 
Little Moon Men, yeah. uh, Space Men, Watch I Got Promoted. I like It all sort of does seem like it is a thinly veiled reference to her position in S.W.O.R.D. and where right. she's at. So I do agree with you. I, I, at first I was like, yeah. I think I'm going crazy here. And then I was like, no, I think this does make sense. Yeah, and yeah. she asked for office materials, which could be information from Wanda, information about what's happening. She's trying to get these office materials. Like, why would you randomly go to a neighbor's house to get office materials? You know, and that's the thing there that I think yeah. she's uh, a, a, bit of a reference there. But anyway, I want to make a quick reference to her outfit, which looks fantastic. But she has these kind of pulsar symbols on her or sunflower explosion things. It's very reminiscent uh, of the of the Captain Marvel design. Monica Rambeau being Captain Marvel yeah. there on yep. the left. That is her design there on the left. And she is she's one of these people also is a reference to how uh, Captain Marvel came in too. Captain Marvel came in when Monica Rambeau became Captain Marvel. She basically had a couple of training missions. Then she's like, I'm in the Avengers. And then she was leading the Avengers. That's going corporate, isn't it? That's another thing, too, how quickly she moved up the chain. Monica Rambo is no one to mess with, for sure, if you look at her in the comics. Uh, all right, uh, let's see here. Where else do we go? Yeah, the clouds aren't working. Geraldine is – oh, yeah, we get Geraldine now. She drops the – after she goes into the nursery, uh, she sees the uh, crib, ignores the stork, then uh, Wanda drops the glass of uh, flowers that she was using to cover her belly. And Geraldine goes, you're pregnant. And they go out, which is a great moment. And, uh, and then the car, uh, then the do then we go to vision running up on the car on the doctor. And of course, the, car the doctor says right at this moment, when I'm about to go to Bermuda, my car poops out. Uh, yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> so Michael, talk to me about this old scene. Well, it's great. I mean, first of all, I, I I love the tag. I'll jump. I'll jump to the end first. His yeah. wife getting out of that car and being like, "What about my two piece?" Like I'm like, "Oh my god!" Every sitcom in the world. These people watched all the sitcoms. It was so good. But yeah, what I think is really interesting here is that uh, you know Vision runs in and basically gets him and runs off, and that's basically all that happens. But the fact that when we see him, his car is broken down, it is very clear that like no matter what is going on and as he as the doctor is going to say shortly like yeah. he's not going to bermuda yeah. he's not going he's anywhere not going anywhere he's yeah. not leaving this town yeah. no i mean he <laughs> references it at the end of the episode right, <laughs> like, right. exactly that's what, yeah, no his, one's going his, in or out his line his line so even before we get to his super creepy line at the end yeah. of the episode even right here it's like it's that whole thing where you're like I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna go do this. And then the world is like, no, you're not. Oh, well then I think I'm just gonna go here. Nope, I'm gonna drive away. And like, there's like, you know, in Harry Potter, they have spells like this. In the world of magic, the whole like, I'm gonna do something and then sort of decide that I'm not, mm. or there's gonna be these problems. Right, like, right, right, like, right. There's gonna be things that naturally come up that naturally, quote unquote, yeah, come up yeah, yeah. that prevent you from leaving. So it seems like, oh, it's just part of the whole, you know, oh, just my bad luck, but yeah. actually, yeah. It's, yeah, not. it's like, a, it's like, yeah. and, and and so like, there's a, a there's a long history in magical literature of distractor yes. spells and this kind of yeah. thing, and yeah. so it very much seems like this is that that no matter what anyone in Westview tries to do, uh, they're staying. Yep. Well, let's go through the scene real quick. Basically, the uh, you know, uh, we go back to Wanda and Geraldine. Wanda's having the babies. Everything's going crazy. Geraldine goes, I'm sure there's a perfectly logical explanation for this. Uh, and then she has, and this is another moment too, Michael. You brought up the times that she breaks. She breaks a little bit in this moment too when Wanda says, I can't do this. Yep. Geraldine looks at her in a moment of encouragement and says, you can. Kind of like- yep helping her kind of maybe a little bit come closer to breaking out of this world that she's creating herself to deal with the trauma. Vision comes back in with the doctor as well, says, oh, did I miss it? The baby is born. Uh, it, Wanda, I mean, Geraldine takes the doctor into the kitchen and they have a very tender moment here, Wanda and Vision, with, with him embracing his child for the first time that is quickly broken by the screams yeah. of a second child coming. So, <laughs> this entire scene is just uh, so well done and so perfectly in the realm of Brady Bunch or 70s type of comedy. Uh, and we have now two babies so uh billy and tommy billy michael and tommy. uh who, who are these people uh as we have said uh in the <laughs> comics wanda and vision uh do have children or fantasy children uh wanda sort of uh creates this reality where she and vision have these children billy and tommy twins yeah. Um, and I think what's really key here uh, in the comics that got me thinking about the residents of Westview is 
Uh, Billy and Tommy were real when Wanda was around. Yes. And when mm-hmm. Wanda left, they ceased to be real. Like, it's not like she just created them and they were real in perpetuity. They were real when Wanda wanted them to be real. Right. And then they weren't. Uh, freaked out a lot of babysitters. It was weird. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so I think that similarly here, she is now in this made-up reality. Uh, whether it be hers or someone else's or some mixture of that, she has now given birth to two kids that... A, given the gestation time, B, given the fact that her husband is a robot, should not exist. And so on some level are not real. And I think what's really interesting about this, or not interesting, but sad, is that we all know, like we've talked about this on dozens of episodes as we've been stoked about this show. And when you talk about in a comic book, oh yeah, she made up these two babies and then they got sucked into Mephisto because he had reabsorbed his soul, but then eventually they got reincarnated. And it all feels very much like comic book gobbledygook. You're like, yeah, that's a cool thing that happened. When I was watching them be born, and to your point, Johnny, the beautiful moment between the two of them and Paul Bettany's like, don't you want to meet them as yourself? And he like goes back to being regular vision and they have this beautiful moment and they're holding these babies. And I'm like, this is so it's fucked. (laughs) This is so like, like is vision real? And if he is real, these kids aren't real. So now he loves these kids, but they're not real. And this is so bad. And and granted, we're all comic book nerds. So we know that however this is going down, uh, eventually Tommy and Billy are going to become real in some way, shape or form because yeah. they're clearly going down this young Avengers road. Yeah. But just the whole concept of how this is going down, it's it hits so much harder and more disturbing watching it happen on TV than it does reading it in a comic book panel, to me at least. Yeah, Emma, talk to me. Billy Kaplan and Tommy Shepard, that's who they are. Billy Kaplan, uh, and they become Wiccan and Speed. And Speed. Wiccan is connected to the Kree Skull Alliance. We uh, scroll, or rather, Kree Skull Alliance. We saw... The scrolls here, uh, you know, in uh, Spider Man and in other places. So, uh, Captain Marvel here. Well, I was going to say oh, also yeah. the very direct reference to Captain Marvel that you get through Monica Rambo. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, but I, I totally agree with what you're saying, Mike, that like it's so sad actually yeah. to like yeah. when you really think about these children who, d- I mean, don't exist. Right but do exist kind of because yeah. as you say, like they, they are young Avengers. So right. I'm very curious to see where we go with these kids within the context of yeah. WandaVision itself. Yeah. And, she- and Oh yeah. Go ahead. No, but- I was going to say just, just to further the point that you were kind of making Johnny, that this, that yeah. these kids in, when they are reincarnated and become young Avengers in the comics, Wiccan has magical yeah. hex powers yes. and yes. speed and, and, uh, and uh, Tommy uh, speed. Yeah is a speedster. So uh, the fact that they are leaning into vision, I had a whole conversation with somebody last night about, are they just throwing this vision speed thing in now to sort of get it in there? Or because Wanda is clearly on some level recreating vision, is she putting a piece of her dead brother brother in there as well? Which is why these two kids now have like like this power that vision never had. Uh, It's not that their children are wizard and robot uh right. it's it's a magical child and a speedster child and so the fact that these guys are born and we're showing vision has this speed power and we're about to get to the point where wanda's brother comes up those three things are not unrelated yeah and this is the first time that wanda has referred to vision as a th- uh, synthesoid which that's yeah. the first time in the mcu that that's what he's been referred to as which right. is what he is yeah, good point good point and shannon we also get uh this uh moment where the doctor comes back in has a little bit of misogyny just to say you know geraldine you're <laughs> a great nurse uh and they all had they all have an exchange there and then of course uh, wanda uh, tells vision to take the doctor out yet again take the doctor out of the house again they're outside they have this conversation where the doctor says small towns you know so hard to escape almost as if he's like, please, for the love of God, help me. Uh, and then he sees her, Herb, Herb and Agnes having a conversation. And I watched the episode this morning with my headphones on. You can hear their conversation a little bit clearer when oh. you're listening to the headphones. And she's going, I don't know where she came from, Geraldine. She don't know what's going on. And Herb's like, I don't either. What, what, where, what, is her, what is she supposed to be doing here? So they're having this back and forth about it. Uh, and then, of course, uh, they turn around and see Vision and they start to talk to him about Geraldine's. And these are the two scenes, I think, that ends this. Both the Wanda scene with uh, the Wanda scene with uh, with Geraldine and this Herb and Agnes scene with Vision that are really the breaks that are happening here overall. It, it seems like Agnes and Herb 
are trying to get uh, a vision to get Geraldine out of here. Why are they afraid of Geraldine? What do you well, guys think she represents? Well, with the doctor, it's a very deliberate choice of words. Small towns are hard to mm -hmm. escape, not leave, escape. Right, escape. That, means, right. that means we are we are trapped here. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of like, like, I know last week we had talked about Herb possibly being another sword agent, that they didn't show up. Herb didn't yeah. show up until after that helicopter crash. So why so, would he question her being? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Well, that well, that sort of that's invalidates that theory. Yeah. Like, yeah, I think, I think, yeah, I, I, I think, I think what we saw with Herb this week invalidates the idea that he might have come in with her. I think, no, I think Herb Geraldine, is definitely, yeah. Geraldine is the only is the only uh, yes. sword agent right now. We believe. What yeah. I'm really curious about with Agnes yeah. um, is her husband, Ralph. Ralph, she, how, how she says he looks better in the dark. Uh, in the episode before, she mentioned like, "Oh, if you're taking if you're taking volunteers to make someone disappear, can I offer my friend Ralph, or can I offer my my <laughs> husband yeah, Ralph? Like, yeah. this is going to be really interesting. Like, if she keeps bringing this character up, because sitcoms, especially in the '70s and the '80s and even the '90s, yeah. had a history of talking about characters that never showed up. We like, never saw. Kramer had his yeah. friend Bob Sacamano, which was always a really really easy reference. It was yeah. easy for a joke, but because or, 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 yeah." Uh, or Stan, they, Stan and Will and Grace, yeah. Yes. yeah. What, what they've done thus far is, uh, uh, it, it seems like Ralph is going to be somebody. Is Ralph Mephisto? We'll see. Yeah, I wonder. Yeah, Mike. Well, it's it's to Emma's point. It's it's taking a. It's the same thing they've been doing. It's taking a <laughs> sitcom trope that we are very familiar with. Yes. Yeah. And using it in a two level way like the fact that there's a best friend who's always talking about her like her shit ass husband over here <laughs> is so normal that you almost don't notice right except that then mm -hmm. you're like well wait a minute or yeah, what is really happening him. here yeah the i i went back and watched this whole scene with vision agnes and herb uh several times because to, johnny to your point i'm like okay so what's really happening yeah, here? yeah. like they they clearly like like they want Geraldine out, clearly. Mm -hmm. yeah. And almost as if, like, I was thinking of it like white blood cells in your bloodstream just attacking an infection. Yeah. It's like, Geraldine, Geraldine does not belong here and she's yeah. messing it up. But, like, but she then at no the husband, same time, she has no family. Yeah, she, has no she has no home. Oh, yeah. uh, she doesn't fit here. She's right. not supposed to be here. Uh, and kind of cluing Vision in, but then when Vision kind of starts pushing on it and questioning, Herb is like, well, yeah, it's because we're, it's because we're, yeah, and then Agnes turns around and she's like, shut up, don't you say anything. And so right. it's like, they are, and then, and then Agnes very specifically turns around and clearly, as opposed to other times earlier in the show where we've seen characters kind of fall into the sitcom mm -hmm. and fall out of the sitcom, is just clearly putting it on where she's like, well, I got to go wink and gets the yeah. fuck out of there. And then Herb kind of backs off and it's like, okay. And, and, and given to Shannon's point, given the doctor's very specific use of the word yeah. escape, yeah. clearly the town people are trapped. Agnes is a whole other monster. So like she's what, whether she is trying to keep everybody in line or not or whatever, but like there's a lot going on here that as we get into episodes four five and six, it's going to be like, Oh, okay, now it makes sense. But for now, it's just like, I don't know what's going on, but this is some crazy shit. What, yeah. is, what is macrame? Does anyone know what macrame is? I don't know what macrame is. It's, it's, like, it, knitting, it's like knitting, right? Yeah, it's like knitting. knitting, yeah. Okay, all right. Knitting, which means you're creating something out of, right? Some Something you're creating, it, you're building it out, right? So macrame, she's got to go macrame. Yeah. Herb says, I'll see you on the flip side, which is what? The other side of reality. I'll see you on the flip. Like there's these little, yeah. you're right, like escape, yeah. flip side, macrame. These are interesting little double references when they're using the words carefully uh in this exchange but emma i'll go to you on this one now we go back to uh to wanda and geraldine here and this is where the real break happens they're looking at the children they're twins she reveals to geraldine i was a twin she almost slides into the sokovian accent a little bit I, oh she full on she's yeah, right? she full on Sokovian from twins right and then geraldine says oh she says pietro uh, uh wanda does and geraldine says pietro uh, ultra killed, killed him ultron. right so talk to me killed, through, yeah. about this whole scene i mean when she brought up the fact that she was a twin to me it didn't feel like her going oh i'm sharing this story it was her reality mm, creeping yep. back in yeah good point. um and to me i felt in that moment that geraldine who were given other things that happen in the scene are pretty sure that she is a sword agent of, of some sort, yeah. or is at least she's got the, the necklace with the yeah. logo. 
um, which also sets Wanda off. And that makes her be like, you need to leave. Yeah. But there's no, there's no fixing you and making you fit into this world. You got to get out. Yeah. Um, but again, it's like, it felt in that moment, like, oh, Geraldine is catching on to the fact that like, there is still recognition of actual reality in Wanda when she brings up Pietro. And so she was trying to like, encourage her to go back into reality. <laughs> Mm. I, 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 I read it a completely different way, oh, uh, interesting. but I think that's really interesting. The way that I read it was, I agree that in that moment, Wanda, the facade breaks down when she says, I'm a twin. Yeah. I had a brother whose name was Pietro and like, kind of like the accent is there on it. And then goes into this Sokovian lullaby. Like she's definitely having a moment where the reality of her life outside of Westview is that that the looking at those twins broke through but then as she's singing that sokovian uh uh lullaby geraldine there's a there's several seconds before she says he yes. was killed by ultron and if you watch her face she's like kind of like whoa what is how right. like i didn't i didn't read this as oh i i'm a sword agent who sees that wanda's there let me try and like pull her out of this I think she almost absent-mindedly like she's been in this fog she's sure. been in the 70s tv show and she's like you did have a brother named Pietro. Uh, he was killed by Ultron, wasn't he? It was right. It was so like, a, she, she's remembering it too, because she's like, yes, I'm a sword agent. You're Wanda Maximoff. Yeah. Your brother Pietro was killed by Ultron. This is why I'm here. This is the mission. And like, it's almost like she's remembering too. But as soon as oh. she says it, we don't have time to go any further because Wanda is like, what? And yeah. <laughs> I will tell you this. I was watching this alone in my apartment and... You know a moment is good when a gay man audibly gasps and clutches his non-existent pearls. <laughs> like I literally, I literally went, <gasps> like it was so good. Yeah, it was. Yeah, Shannon, she goes right into that tone that uh, which I alluded to earlier when we saw her confront Thanos in uh, Endgame. She goes into that like totally emotionless tone, like, "Who are you? What are you doing here?" That kind of, and it's oh, it's menacing, man. And, and in the trailers. Geraldine answers her and says, I don't know. Right, so right. This, it sounds like she says, I don't remember. Right. That's, right. that's what it sounded yeah. like to me. So yeah. as Mike had said, like she is struggling. She, she's in the fog. Like she's yeah. affected by all of this stuff as well. So she is struggling to keep that tether to reality. But sure. she certainly sees right away, whatever right. she's done, it has touched a nerve. Yeah. yeah. I sure. think I think my perspective on it was wasn't that like Geraldine has always been aware, but so so much as like there was this moment of awareness in Wanda that reawakened yeah. that sort of awareness in her, like yeah. brought her out of the seventies well, fog as well, and was right. like, oh wait a second, I, it was as much about Geraldine being like, I need to get back to reality and, yeah. and figure out what's going on. And to be clear, to be clear, I could be a thousand percent wrong. <laughs> uh, and like, 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 like I, yeah. I, I, it's going to be really interesting. I think we're going to get a lot of answers next week that'll yeah. like, at, at, that when we all get back together, it's going to be like, oh, okay. So you yeah. could a hundred percent be right on this. Like it's, it's really hard to say, but it's fun to sort of go through all the possibilities. Yeah. <laughs> And I think, uh, and I think uh, another thing to point out too, and I think this is something you mentioned, uh, Emma. Every time she has this break, uh, Geraldine does, where she kind of reconnects or whatever. Uh, it's when Wanda is losing control of the situation. Yes. So it's like when Wanda herself opens the portal a little bit. Uh, Monica Rambeau, who has been brought in from the outside, uh, kind of awakens herself. So it's like interesting yeah. how this is only happening when Wanda is losing her powers. So anyway, Vision comes back in, kind of says something about Agnes. And, oh, by the way, Agnes has broached three witches on it. Is that a Macbeth reference? You know, Vision was referencing Shakespeare earlier. I don't know. Or it, I also saw somebody say, like, because I think it's three witches or in the middle, it might be the Grim Reaper with a scythe. Oh, uh, okay. Like, is it referencing? Yeah. So like there's who knows, but it's definitely right. that's oh, yeah, Agatha Harkness. Right. That's Agatha Harkness. It's Agatha Harkness. Is. Yeah. <laughs> when, she, when she turned to Herb, she wasn't angry at Herb, right? She was like, don't. So I wonder if Agnes is a part of this with Sword to try to get mm. Wanda out of this situation. Maybe she's a part of this monitoring it. So one of you all mentioned it last week that she's the only one that doesn't look like she's uncomfortable in the situation. She's the one that's kind of in control well, of it. So and I she's also the person that, again, like in that first episode was pointing out to Wanda like inconsistencies in her own yeah. creation. Like, hey, you don't have a wedding ring and you don't know when your anniversary well, is and yeah. that kind of stuff. I, 
I think whether Agatha is there, Agnes, Agatha, whatever, whether she is there because she's part of the bad guys and she's working with Mephisto, or if, if anybody is indeed behind the curtain, yeah. whether she's there as, an, as a representation of S.W.O.R.D., whether she's there as a representation of the magical community in Doctor Strange, or whether she's there on her own, which I think are probably all the possible options, yeah, uh, sure. I think what's happening here is that Wanda is clearly not what we would call stable. No, of course and not. I think that, and I think that you have people within Westview that are like, we're fucked and we're just trying to like get by. And when we realize what's happening, we're like, we're screwed. You have S.W.O.R.D. that's trying to get in because this is a highly dangerous situation, which we now, by the end of this episode, confirmed. Yes, that's what S.W.O.R.D. is doing. Yeah. But Agatha might be the one who's like, guys, I'm a magical person and I am telling you, you got to handle this carefully because if you fuck this up, yeah. this is this is nu- this is magical nuclear winter. Absolutely. So, yeah. so the reason yeah. that she's like the reason that she's trying to get rid of Geraldine possibly is not because she's a bad guy and is trying to keep the good guys away, but like what Sword is doing could potentially, as we see with what happens to Geraldine, be yeah. very very bad. Yeah, this could be a battle that's happening here. Like remember, like the Doctor Strange references are here. If you look for them, the butterflies things as you mentioned, I think Shannon. But also remember in the comics, it's Doctor Strange who delivers her twins, and they've yes. said already that Doctor Strange is connected. The Multiverse of Madness is connected to this. So is it possible that Doctor Strange is warring with Nick Fury and Sword on how to deal with this? And Agatha or Agnes rather is working with Doctor Strange because she herself is a sorceress working with Doctor and her seeing Geraldine come in is Sword coming and trying to mess up what they're trying to do. Because mm. we've been saying that Wanda's created this, but it's quite possible that it's Doctor Strange who's created this force field, which we're going to see in a second. And it's Wanda who's operating within this force field, and he's monitoring this because, like you said, Mike, if he does it, it's nuclear winter, like you said. So, yeah. Yeah, and it's interesting because, you know, in the the second episode, Randall Park is saying, Wanda, who's doing this to you? Right. Maybe Wanda is doing this to herself. Yeah. And this leads us to when Vision comes back in and says, where's Geraldine? Right. It is sinister. I mean, it is a sinister expression she has on her face of, like, it's fine. It's fine. She yeah. just had. She, she just had to, take off. she had to rush home. She had to rush home. And as and she's doing the it, aspect, the TV. Yeah, the aspect ratio the aspect changes ratio. on yes. the TV. <laughs> she's jettisoned out of the force field. She lands here. The uh, flood. The spotlight is on her. These uh, military vehicles surround Covered her. Covered in in Wanda's magic. Yeah, mm-hmm. covered right, covered in Wanda's magic. Great point. And then we get an overhead shot, and we see the force field to our right. These pylons with electric currents that are keeping at bay, and we see these tents, massive tents, and a whole military installations, which we assume is probably sword. And then we hear daydream believer from the monkeys, which is also about like waking up, obviously from uh, or creating a fantasy world to live in when I mean, reality yeah. hits. Yeah, daydream daydream believer is Wanda. <laughs> right, right, right. It was in the trailers too. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Very true. Uh, all right, and then we so we're left with a little bit of mystery and excitement going into yes. episode four. So I hope the people who are like, "What is going on here?" in the first two episodes enjoyed episode three, and now that we're getting a little bit, probably going to yeah. get more modern intrusions into this uh into this yeah. uh, world yeah. that they'll be more because well, i guess we're going to 80s next yeah yeah well because like, i mean the thing is is like at the end of this episode we do get at least one big answer that we assumed all along which is that like everybody that's in wanda's world is a real person yeah yeah right like she is yeah. truly like co-opted or or be it she be it dr strange whatever's going on to create this world like an actual town was co-opted to be wanda's like mental safe space yeah 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 i I think that uh to your point that it was a reveal that wasn't a reveal because it's what we've all assumed all along just based on the trailers and other things but it's nice to sort of officially have all the things that we've been talking about confirmed Yeah, Johnny, you're right. We know from the trailers that we sort of have a Family Ties style '80s moment left to go. We've seen yeah. we've seen Agnes in her like '80s aerobics wear with the big yes. hair. Right. So we know we have that. I know. Uh, I've heard from a couple people that this is also episode four is where it goes big. We're mm-hmm. gonna we're gonna see a lot more next week than just the cool. 80s episode of WandaVision. I think we're right. going to start to get a lot of answers. Uh, so I think I think for people who have been um, f- 
feeling like it, feeling like it's moving a little slow for them or they're not enjoying the sitcom part as much as we all are. I think next week is where we start to really see how all of this officially really starts to tie to the MCU. Yeah, and yeah. after watching a new episode, because this is what I did yesterday, it's like I, I watched I watched the new episode. Then you take that information that you've been given and you go back and watch the first two again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In episode two, watching Vision show up at that you know community community watch type meeting right. and how off how off you know they are very unsettled with the fact right. that he's there. Mm-hmm. And again, it's like what is Vision in this world? Yeah. Because yeah. Vision, is, as Emma's pointed out, Vision is dead. Right. Yeah, he's dead. I, <laughs> like, and they're trying I to really, negotiate this world with him there as well because they have to. Whereas mm-hmm. Geraldine, they know she has no home, no family, no husband. They got to jettison her out of there. Sorry, yeah. Mike, what were you going to say? No, I was just going to say, like, I mean, I, like, I love all the conjecture about Mephisto and mm-hmm. Nightmare and getting into the more supernatural parts of the MCU. And I think that's all great. But part of me, part of me kind of hopes that we go a simpler route and that yeah, this really is just it. Wanda dealing with her loss and her power. Now, I'm okay if it's like her powers doing all of this has attracted somebody else or if the Mephisto type character, whoever it is, is right. almost like the uh, the magical drug dealer who shows up and says, hey, I can help you jumpstart your powers so that you right. can have all of this but has an ulterior motive. But I think the fact that this is Wanda doing this and trying mm-hmm. to make the world that she wants because she's been through so much trauma is going to be the more emotionally impactful uh, and affecting thing ultimately. So I really hope that however these other pieces come in, we still stay true to this sort of emotional core that they're building between Wanda and Vision. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, so I saw a review uh, last week. I said, this is like every couple episodes is the next stage of grief. So, mm-hmm. you know, and we see her more and more, especially in this episode, uh, we see her losing her grip on the surrounding world yeah. and being able to control uh, uh, the outside well, world from coming in. Yeah. Cause you know, for a brief moment in this episode, she's confronting the reality of yeah. the fact that she was a twin and her brother is not there. Yeah. Uh, again, it was Geraldine who was like, he was killed by Ultron. And she's like, Nope, you gotta go. So <laughs> like, I yeah, do so love, <laughs> do we think he's coming? Do we think he's coming back? Do we think we're going to get Aaron Taylor oh, Johnson or Evan I'm, Peters? Who are we getting? I would not be surprised if we did get Aaron Taylor Johnson in an episode just because, again, that would be – and it, it could go either way. I, I, I won't be surprised if he shows up. I won't be surprised if he doesn't show up. But if he does show up, that is very much in line with her trying to, like, recraft her reality into something that is happier I, for her. I also know there's been these Evan Peters rumors. Yeah. Uh, I believe, like, the guy who did the dubbing for Ev- – what, what, no, Shannon? Well, no, 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 no. That's just my, that's sorry. That's my inner Shannon's monologue. like, Evan Peters <laughs> not. <laughs> Here's the thing. I would think that, for those who don't know, Evan Peters is the one who played Pietro in the Fox franchises at the Mutant, yes. uh, Quicksilver, Pietro. Um, and if we did not know that half the villains from other Spider-Man movies yes. were coming into Spider-Man. Yeah. And right. if we did not know that the literal name of Doctor Strange 2 where Wanda shows up is Multiverse of Madness, yeah. uh, it all of a sudden feels like it's fair okay. game. It's fair game to say my brother in this reality died yeah. and my magic I'm gets to the point where I literally pull in my brother from another reality. Yeah. Okay. I think I think I think is potentially on the table. Okay. Yeah. But, when, like, but when are we gonna see Daddy Suri and McKellen? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or Fastbender, either one. Yeah, I mean, I'll <laughs> pick either. <laughs> play with Fox being under Disney's, Disney's window, but also this idea, Michael, uh, that you were you were referencing the Spanish voiceover artist for Evans Peter Evan Peters revealed on Twitter that he might be coming back and then deleted that tweet. So, you know, uh, so it's a little bit of the possibility of what Quicksilver we're going to get, but it's going to be fun when he does show up. I will say, however, they handle it. I and do I want very the light blue outfit. I want the light blue outfit with the Thunderbolts. I want it. Anyway, no. I, I, I do, whether, however they handle it, and whether we do actually see Pietro, either version of him, uh, yeah. that's all the fun, geeky stuff. I will say that just from an emotional storytelling standpoint, I do love that they're sort of coming back around to this because, you know, in the we, we had the two of them in Age of Ultron. Oh. Pietro died. Uh, and Uh-oh. then... Damn it. Have we lost him? Oh, there what? he goes. Who? Am I here? Am I here? Yeah, th- uh, yeah there you go. I, okay, go ahead. Okay, I got you. I stepped yeah, into here. the multiverse. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I know. I was just going to say that um, 
I, I love that we're coming back around to it because we didn't really... She, once we got to Civil War, we were sort of on a road to Infinity War and Endgame, and we didn't really touch on Pietro. Right. And so the fact that as we're dealing with Wanda's trauma, losing Vision, that we are going back to Age of Ultron and taking that piece and actually giving it storytelling heft, I think yeah. is really smart on their part. Agreed. Agreed. And we shall see. All right. Well, there's our a spoiler review for episode three of WandaVision. With that, now we're, we're all uh, we're all on the edge of our seat for episode four, seeing where it's going to go, what we're going to get. Uh, hopefully we get Agnes in that 80s workout. Jane Fonda gear. That's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, and we'll see more with Herb. Remember, Herb's the one that gave Vision the big red to gum up his works. Uh, there's more here with Herb that I think we're going to explore. Uh, and Norm, who some people think is the cl the closet communist. I don't know. We'll see. But so much to explore here. Oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. <laughs> so we'll see. And Dottie as well. Uh, much love uh, to you all for watching this. So let's go around the horn. Emma, where can they find you? Yeah, uh, I'm at Emma Fife all over the internet, wherever Emma Fife's are sold. Uh, find me on Twitter, Instagram, my Twitch channel. Uh, also check out the work that I am doing over uh, on Venn. You can check out what we've got at Venn.tv or the Venn Download on YouTube channel. Great stuff. YouTube, uh, just on YouTube channel, the Venn Download YouTube channel on YouTube. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Uh, Shannon, what are we going to tell them? Yeah, if you'd like to follow us on social media, on Twitter, it's at geek underscore buddies. On Instagram, at the underscore geek underscore buddies. If you'd like to follow me on social media, on Twitter, it's at Shannon underscore McClung. On Instagram, at Shannon the Geek Buddy. If you would like to follow Mr. Vogel, it is at MK2. And if you would like to follow Mr. Roca, it is at the Roca Says. Mikey? Uh, look, we don't know if Vision is real. We don't know if Tommy and Billy are real. But I can tell you that we are very real and needy and we need your help. <laughs> Uh, we'd love for you to, uh, to, uh, help us get more people watching this, get more people joining into the Geek Buddies reviews, Geek Buddies show. So go ahead and hit the like button below, subscribe to Johnny's Outlaw page. There is a ton of amazing content. Uh, if you are listening to us on Anchor or Spotify or Apple Podcasts, uh, go ahead and rate us, leave some comments. It helps us go up in the rankings. And, uh, the best thing that you can do is share this link on Twitter, share this link with your friends as you're talking about WandaVision and you sound super super, super smart. And they're like, where did you hear that? Send this link their way. Uh, the more people that are coming into the conversation, the more fun that we have. We love talking to you guys in the comments below. We love talking to you guys on Twitter. So uh, spread the love around and, uh, you know, even, even to other multiverses, just take it far <laughs> and wide. There you go. All right. Thanks everybody so much for joining us here. We'll talk to you next week with another brand new spoiler review episode of WandaVision, uh, uh, episode four here on The... Geek Buddies! <gasps> hey!